<laughs> I've got all the wrong buttons today. Welcome to the stream. I'm Jeffrey Lessel. Um, tonight we're going to do a little bit more Emacs configuration with my uh, Emacs config. Um, I've got a few interesting things planned uh, today, so let's get into it. Uh, go over to my coding screen here. And uh, here on the right, you can see kind of what I'd like to go over today. And um, this is all live, so we'll see how far we can get into it and how well it goes. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. The first thing I wanted to do is um, I gave a talk last week uh, at a conference. It was the first virtual conference, and I was doing like live coding. And one thing I wished is that I had the time in the mode line. And I thought for sure Emacs had some sort of configuration that I could set that would allow that uh, something like that to where I could see the time in the mode line. So that's the first thing we want to do today is just kind of make sure that I can see the time in the mode line. Um, now, one thing I did find in uh, I did a little bit of research before this stream. And one thing I found was something called, what was it? Um, time. Uh, no, display time mode. Yeah, toggle display of time, load level, and mail flag in mode lines. So if I if I just turn that on, you'll see that in the bottom right corner here, we do have, uh, oh, you can't, oh, yeah, you can't see that because my face is just above it. Nope, my face is over it. Let me um, go over to the other one. So over on the left-hand side screen now, you can see that um, we have the time, 9, 12 p.m., but also this number here, 2.87, and that's the system load average for the past minute. Now, I don't know why um, that is included in display time mode or whatever it's called. Uh, it, yeah, display time mode. But I don't want it there. I would like it to not be there. All I want is the time, um, and I don't care about the load average down there. So. Um, we can, um, on my startup here, or Emacs general system settings, we can just add a new one here and says uh, display um, time. Actually, I don't want it to be on by default. So let me show you something. If I press space and then comma, you'll see in my, my main Hydra here, I've got a preferences uh, Hydra. If I press comma, these are all the different preferences that I've set up so I could just kind of change things on the fly if I wanted. Uh, so I don't have to remember all the different um, functions and commands to, to do this. Um, but you can see like in just turns on line numbering. I usually have those off by default, but sometimes it's nice to have them on. Um, and it, like Hydra is nice in that I can, you know, keep pressing it and it toggles it back and forth. Then like you can see uh, the white space, which isn't gonna make much sense until I go here. So like if I turn on the white space, W, you can see spaces or dots and uh, new lines are like the dollar signs, um, tabs. Hopefully we'll never see tabs in one of my files. Um, I'm a spaces guy, but that's that's kind of why I have the ability to do this is because sometimes I open files from somewhere else or some output from some program and it does have tabs and I want to convert those to spaces or something else is weird white space wise and I just, I'm just i'm trying to figure out why so um i have the ability to turn that on um turn that back off also highlight line is on by default it's kind of hard to see with this theme but you can kind of see like as i move up and down on the lines here you can kind of tell that the line i'm on is a little bit lighter in color and that just helps me again to to find my cursor um and then uh what else we have highlight and dense uh, this basically shows you how far in indent wise you are in specific areas like on Emacs org mode It's not that um, useful, but like things like I don't know in Ruby and uh, JavaScript, I'm, I'm not a Python guy, but I imagine in Python would be really um, Helpful, but you can kind of see how far indented you are Especially if you have a long file that can be helpful, but it also tends to slow it down sometimes on huge files So I have that off by default uh, and then of course I can increase and decrease font sizes. Um, show or so diff HL. If I just create a new line here and um, let's say something new, and I save it, you'll see that on the left. I think that's called the gutter. On the left, or maybe fringe. Hmm. See, I'm a new Emacsy guy. I don't. I don't know the gutter or fringe. Um, on the left, you'll see that it's green. So that means that I've added something since I've last committed this file. So if I delete those and like uh, delete that line and save, then you can see that I've deleted a line that used to be here uh, since I've last committed this file. 
Um, so that's nice to see sometimes. Like if I do that again and turn off diff HL, then that coloration goes off. I can toggle that back on and off, on and on. But I tend to like having it on. Um, I think I just broke it. I, I toggled it too fast. Let's see. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. Save that. And I do want that on. Uh, then show fill column. If I turn that on, you can see um, this kind of a, a lighter line down the line here. And that's where my um, fill column is set to. And uh, a lot of times, well, especially like in Emacs, I do like to have um, auto fill mode on, um, which if you see in my uh, Hydra down here, it's F. It, I can toggle that on and off. But I have it to where if I open an, an org file, it automatically turns it on. But I like to, to have it auto basically auto return for me once I hit a certain uh, line number. But then there's other things like in programming modes. I like to kind of generally keep my lines around that length if I can. And um, it's nice to see it visually and be like, oh, I'm getting close to it or I've gone over it. And I should, you know, uh, go to a new line when I can. Um, so that's helpful. But in org mode, I also have, you can see here like UI and themes, these headers. Um, these are not indented in the actual text file like in the, the the file under that underlines underlies this display does not have indentation it's just extra star extra asterisk but I do have org mode set to um, indent it indent it for me so but you that means that the indentation is screwed up like the the number of, of characters from this D to the actual end of the fill line fill column is not the same anymore so when i have it on org mode it doesn't make sense to have that on at all so uh, that's off uh for org mode and it's usually on for other like programming modes i think i think i have it that way electric pair uh, if you're not familiar that's basically if i like start opening parentheses it starts you know already inserting the closing parentheses and as i close them it kind of makes sure that i close the right amount of ones um and things like that so uh, typically I don't like my editor trying to be, um, cute. And I just realized I lost my camera feed. Hold on one second. Okay, I got that back on. I have a feeling that's going to go off a couple more times. It's, again, I'm this is kind of a new setup, I'm, a new thing for me. So um, for some reason, my camera turns off occasionally, uh, and that's not cool, camera. Um, okay, so typically I don't like my editor doing things for me. I'm trying to be smart because I found that more times than not, it just gets in my way and um, makes things harder. And like if I write something in here, and then like sometimes it just doesn't recognize that this is the closing parentheses and I just want it to be closed. Um, but then sometimes like in lisps, uh, it's not like when I'm writing Emacs, Emacs lisp, it's nice for it to have it um, automatically close some stuff. Um, but that's off by default, but I can turn it on if I want to. And then auto fill mode already went over that. And then down here on the right, my mode line, I've got some um, configurations we can do on my mode line. Let me actually close that scratch. Uh, so on my mode line, if I press um, MC, that turns off the column number. So right now you see 241 and then colon uh, zero. If I turn on the line numbers, you'll see that uh, I'm on line 241. Uh, you can see it over here in the fringe. And um, I'm at column zero. Uh, but sometimes, you know, that takes up space that I want for something else. So I can turn that off. So I can say MC and it turns off the column indicator. And then if I don't want the line numbers, I can say ML and that turns that off. Um, and then I can turn on and off a word count. So like, you know, this has 9,626 words. Um, and then my perspective list over here as well. So let me actually turn back on the line number at least and turn uh, off the line numbers. Mm -mm, there we go. All right. Um, now over here where it says main, you can see that that's um, my perspectives or workspaces. I haven't decided what I want to call them. I think. Emacs calls it perspectives. Um, I have a Hydra that calls them workspaces, and then this one obviously says perspectives. So I don't know which to land on, 
Um, but if I press uh, space W, this is my workspaces Hydra, and I can press W again to create or switch to a different um, different workspace or perspective. So I can say like YouTube. Now you'll see um, I have YouTube and main, and I can switch back and forth between the YouTube and main workspaces. And this is kind of a, a way to, to keep different um, groupings of files together or different, uh, almost like windows or frames um, in the same frame. Uh, but sometimes, like you can see, there's YouTube and main. Like I've had situations in which I've had four perspectives open at once, and uh, that starts to get really long down there on the um, on the mode line. So um, sometimes I like to turn that off. So if I made this pers this toggle. If I press MP, first it turns it off, and then I can press MP again, and it turns it on into like a short version where it only shows the current perspective and then I've got MP again and it goes back to showing all the perspectives. Uh, tonight we don't need the perspectives, so I'm actually going to turn them off and then I'm going to um, delete this workspace, so K for kill, I'm going to kill the YouTube one, back to the main one. Now, what I want to do is also have the the time and stuff in the mode line as one of the options. So uh, if going back to what I was doing a minute ago, I was going to add it up here and just say turn on the display time mode when uh, on startup, but I don't want it on most of the time. Um, I just want it on sometimes. And I certainly want it configurable um, or toggle toggleable. <laughs> If that's a word. All right, so down at the very bottom here, not the very bottom, but down close to the bottom, uh, I've got my Hydra menus, and this is my preferences Hydra here. Um, I've got some of my own um, functions for toggling things, and um, this is my this was like one of the first Lisp things I ever wrote, and uh, it's I'm, I know there's got to be a better way to do it, but it's just like nested if statements to try to do that toggling short, long, and then off for the perspective names. Um, but then down here we have um, defining the Hydra, and I'm using a package called um, Pretty Define Hydra, or, or Pretty Hydra rather, um, which is really nice. Uh, makes obviously you can see it really it makes it really easy to define the menu that the Hydra menu that you want, um, and then make it pretty. Like it even has this toggle true or toggle T option where you can say, hey, this is just a toggle. So if it's on, then um, then it, you know, put that little asterisk by it. I don't know if you see like line number, for example, has that asterisk in there. It means it's on. Um, but sometimes it doesn't, it's not really easy to know whether it's on or off. And so you have to kind of um, tell it like a function to call in order to figure out uh, whether it's on or off. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is add another um, mode line option here. Um, let's move that to the right uh, and turn fly check mode off. Global, I, again, if you've watched the past streams, you know that that's something I do every time. I just need to make it um, something that happens automatically. All right, so for the mode line, I'll say MT for time and let's define a function. Um, actually, do we need to define? No, it's just, mm, oh shoot, what was it called? display time mode that's what it was display time mode yeah and it's a toggle and uh that should do it so if i kind of put this back over there and then um, redefine my hydra press space comma we should see yeah so mt down there is now display time mode although that should be that should look better i forgot to put in um the text for that particular one so let's do that Let's call it um, display time. Clever, A, eh? And then, of course, I got these backwards, so let's do that. Save it, um, redefine it, call it. Uh, so now we have display time down here, and if I press MT, it goes away. MT again, it comes back. Sweet, so that's available. Now I wanna get rid of this load. I don't care about the load, go away load. Um, so what can we do about that? So if I go, let's look in the help. So control H and then F, um, I have to uh, I have the helpful uh, package installed and then I have F bound to helpful callable. So it does like functions and commands, which honestly I don't know the difference between the two. Um, but we want to see display time mode and see if we can figure out how to um, get rid of that. So let's look at the documentation here. Again, I want that over to the right. Uh, all right, display time mode. 
optional arg, toggle display of time, load level, and mail flag in mode line. So I definitely don't need the mail flag. If called interactively, enable display time mode if arg is positive, and disable it if arg is zero or negative. If called from lisp, also enable the mode if arg is omitted or nil, and toggle it if arg is toggle. Disable the mode otherwise. All right, when display time mode is enabled, it updates every minute. Uh, that's customizable. If display time and date is non-nil, the current day and date are displayed as well. This runs the normal hook display time hook after each update. Um, let's try, let's like set Q um, display time day and date T. Let's see what it looks like. It may be like too big. Let's close that. Mm. Also may have to like reload. There we go. Yeah, if I reload it, it catches that variable. I bet it would have after that minute passed, but I didn't want to wait that long. All right, so that's interesting, but I usually know what day it is. Um, I don't need to know what day it is while I'm editing in Emacs. So let's uh, turn that back off. Uh, so set Q display. Oh shoot, what was it? Display time and date, and let's set that to nil. And let's actually not reload it um, manually. Let's see if it updates itself while we look back at the documentation, which is in not this. Uh, we want to go to helpful command display time. There we go. All right. Um, so key binding. Okay, so it doesn't really tell us in here how to disable <sighs> my camera's off again. I apologize. Um, it doesn't say in here how to display uh, the time mode or how to customize that, um, which is kind of annoying. Like, go away, load level. You don't belong on my time display. Um, so, let's see what we can do about that. Uh, I'm going to quit that. Close that. And, yeah, okay, cool. So, the the time and day, or the day and, day and date went away, um, which is what I was hoping when it would update the next time after that minute. Let's just look in some variables. Control H of V to search for variables. And let's just to see what's under display time uh, so we have mail stuff so let's say format um, 24 hours mail string lo load average let's see what that is uh, value of the system's load average currently shown on the mode line that's not what we want we don't want the current value uh, setting it has no effect anyway okay then let's look for something else. Display time. Let's see, load average threshold. Is there any other load? Default load average. Let's see what that is. Uh, which load average value will be shown in the mode line? Almost every system can provide values of load for the past one minute, past five minutes, or past 15 minutes. The default is to display one minute load average. The value can be one of zero, which is one, one, which is five, two, which is 15, or nil, which is none. That, okay, that's what we need. Um, so let's set that, let's try setting that. So if I go set Q, um, I almost forgot what it was called, display time, default load uh, average nil. Set that. And again, we have to wait for the next refresh. I'm going to turn it off, turn back on to force that. Yes. Okay. So if you look up here, we no longer have the load average. Perfect. So I don't think I ever want the load average. So I'm not even going to make that like something that I can configure. It's just going to be off all the time. Um, and um, let me move. I, I realize that uh, my face is just above, or just covering kind of what we're looking at. So I'm going to move it up just a little bit above my mode line. Um, and if my camera goes off again, I may just turn off my camera altogether. Um, okay, let's, let's keep it there. All right, so let's, um, so since we want it off all the time, let's just set that in this Emacs general system settings area. So we'll say, um, 
don't display load average when displaying time. All right, in the mode line, you can display the current time. However, it also, by default, uh, displays the current load average. I don't want that on the mode line. Mode line. So disable it. How about that. Okay. So start my lisp. Let's just say set queue display load. No, display time. Default load average, and we need to set that to nil. Okay. Perfect. So that's the first thing we wanted to do. So let me actually commit that change to uh, my repo and make sure that's the only thing in here that changed. Oh, also we've set the Hydra, so let's do that as well. Um, so stage that chunk and stage the preferences Hydra where we tog we added the toggle of the display. So Emacs um, show, let's see, allow showing time in mode line. Cool. Perfect. So if we go back to our scratch buffer, that is done. Uh, doom. There we go. Display time in mode line. Done. And this thing I wanted to do was refactor getting the git org and repo name. Um, so again, in the past couple of streams, we were working on some personal git uh, utilities and pack and um, helpers. So um, let's go back and find those. So this is in my personal functions and key bindings, and then I have utilities slash helpers, and then git slash GitHub, and that's in here. So uh, a number of commands in the geo git dash namespace that can simplify the usage of git. Um, but if we look at the open the PR from a local git or from a local branch on GitHub, you'll see we have this full remote um, command and this organ repo command that uses full remote. So this, if you're familiar with like a remote uh, repository, especially on GitHub, it's like the username or the org name slash and then the repo name. So for example, for this particular um, pack, or this particular repo would be like dot, or sorry, geolessel slash dot files. So I need to get, the, get that in order to open it in GitHub. But also um, this open the current file in GitHub uses the exact same code. Like it's literally just a copy and paste. And when you're literally copying and pasting something in two different places, that screams out, uh, this needs to be refactored. Um, so let's do that. Let's refactor that. Uh, I'm going to just do it up here to begin with and we'll organize it better um, just to be able to see it. Uh, and we need this full remote and this replace regex in string line. So this is going to be our starting place. Let me bring it up over here. Um, and we want to define a function and call it geo and then git. Um, now, what do we what do we name it? Since we are getting the organ repo, like we called it organ repo here in our functions that was using it. So maybe we just call this geo git uh, org and repo name. How about that? A name. Uh, the no. There's no variables or arguments. Um, how about returns the organization and repo name from the uh, remote the remote what branch? I forget what that's called. Remote from how about just remote? <laughs> mm, period. And um, it can be called interactively. So interactive. Uh, yes. So we want to let and that's where we're going to do these things let full remote equal that and then let organ repo equal these things and we what do we need to return here we actually are going to close all these off um we're going to return organ repo mm. hmm Well, if that's the case, then um, we don't need to have this organ repo. We just need to call, like we need to close off the let list here. So all, only let we need is uh, this full remote um, and then use it 
here. So again, let's reformat these. Um, replace regex and string on um, both of these things. I think I do need to enclose that in a paren. So reformat again and um, make sure I'm closing everything. So let's see um, for now if that does what we need to do. So before we close out the whole function, let's just say, um, actually let's message this message. And if I just run this, is that going to work? Yep. Nope. That defines the function. That's well, <laughs> that's what we wanted. Um, so let's get to the where the let ends and call that. Yes. Okay. So geolessel dot files. Uh, so that it does it's doing what we wanted it to do, uh, which is good. So um, perfect. So let's um, put that back into the org file and um, just remove that uh, new line. And now we can call it. So in here. Um, we have full remote in this organ repo defined. We can just delete those. Um, so let's delete that and say organ repo is now going to be geo slash git org and repo name. And we can delete all this. So if I uh, redefine this function, um, it didn't work. Oh, I know. Okay, I see. I forgot I have print closing parentheses here. So let's try that. Uh, so let's redefine this. Okay, so now we have GitHub open in GitHub, and um, let's comment out the open the URL. Let's just see if it opens. If it the thing we want to make sure of is that the URL is is um, created successfully. And my uh, camera died again. Hold on. Um, so what we can do is briefly comment out the um, the line that opens it in the browser, and just instead message the the um, github URL that we receive so let's try that let's redefine it and then call it uh, open in github and open github gsl dot files blob yeah okay perfect um, I don't know if it matters but I realize I noticed that the U, the L's up here are lowercase I like them uppercase because I think that's how it is when github does it so let's do that that way uh, so that seems to have worked. That was a good refactor. Let me save that um, and then uh, redefine the function, the geo git open and GitHub function. Um, yeah, look, why is this all this in lowercase? Something weird's going on here. Open, this needs to be uppercase, this needs to be uppercase, and this needs to be uppercase. That's odd. I don't know what did that but I don't like it see I don't like stuff messing with my code stop that unless I tell you to then mess with it all you want um, and then so the the thing that that all this let is doing um, if you're not familiar with Lisp, I didn't know this until like a couple weeks ago or you know not too long ago um, but the star version of let means that you can bind something in this list and then use it later on in the binding list, which is interesting. So um, you can see that um, I'm using, or I've got line num string here and I got file name, um, but I'm using, well, I'm actually not using file name at all anywhere. So I can delete that line. <laughs> um, cool. Less lines or better lines. And then uh, like, okay, so organ repo here. I don't know why it's doing that weird uh, indentation thing, but organ repo is being used here. So, and that's another GitHub URLs being another by, uh, variable variable being bound. Um, so it's being used in there, but what we can do is we can just inline these things. So right now, like organ repo and branch name are just calling my helper functions now. Um, so, okay. My camera went off again. I'm just going to keep the camera off for now. I'm sorry. That's really annoying. All right. Um, so we can use those in line. So let's just use those in line. So organ repo and let's just replace that with calling geo git org and repo name. And then branch name can be replaced with geo git current branch name. So we no longer need these two things. And then we do have this relative name. Um, that's a little bit longer. So I may just keep that as a binding and I'm definitely keeping this line num string as a binding. Uh, it's long. All right, save that and let's redefine it. Actually, let's 
undo the browse again, uh, redefine it in Emacs, and then try and calling it without opening the f file. Okay, it still works. So let's uncomment that and save it, and again redefine it. Uh, so that should be well refactored. Uh, so let me delete this now and move it to its own area. Um, we want to let's do it here. Uh, get the org and um, repo name of the remote. All right, let me paste that in there. Cool. Okay, so we can use that in other places too, like this GitHub open PR from branch, because this is that same code um, that is repeated here. So we can delete all this um, and just where organ repo is being used, we can say we can call geo slash git organ repo name. And let's redefine that. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is do this little message thing again. Uh, message GitHub URL and um, not browse to the URL. Uh, redefine it. So if I call open PR from branch, uh, it shows my branches. That's the one I want. And yes, it creates the URL successfully or correctly. Uh, so that is what we wanted to do. So that's another successful refactor. Um, so let's go back to our scratch here. And um, refactor getting git org and repo name. I think that's pretty much done. That's what we wanted it to do. Um, so let's commit that to git. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, and the capitalization stuff's in there too. That's, that's fine. That's what I want. All right, stage that chunk, stage this chunk, and stage that chunk. Make sure, yeah, it looks right. Okay, so that's all the chunks. Commit Emacs. Um, extract geo slash git. What do we call it? Uh, org and repo name function. Helper function. All right, cool. So now we can go over here, control C, control T, and mark that as done. Now, um, let me see, how long have we been going here? Just over 30 minutes. I um, The URL package is something that um, I'm not super familiar with at all, but there are uh, some ideas I have for um, interacting with GitHub's API. And again, I, I know that uh, uh, Magit um, has like a forge package that can do some things with GitHub. And I tried it for a while, um, but there's just, um, I don't know, it it doesn't do what I, exactly what I wanted to do. And that's the beauty of Emacs is you can make it do exactly what you want it to do. So um, I have ideas of how to do that or that I'm going to do that. So. Um, the thing, the first thing I need to figure out is how do I make API calls inside of Emacs? Um, because that is something I do not know. Um, but I did see that there is a URL package built in. We don't have to use an external dependency, um, but we just need to figure out how to use it. So let's figure out how to use it. Uh, so let's go back to the help. And I believe it's in, um, the Emacs manual or the Emacs info mode. Uh, where is that? Maybe I, where's I? Yeah, info. Um, oh, go away. Let's look in there. So I, um, and then down, actually let's just search for URL. There we go. URL loading package. Let's look in there. This is the manual for the URL Emacs Lisp library. Perfect. That's what we want. Um, and, um, uh, we can look at a few of these things like introduction. Let's take a look in there. Um, if I press enter, let's, a uniform resource identifier is a specially formatted name, such as an internet address. You know what? I'm, I'm starting to doubt whether we should do this tonight, um, or a different stream. Let's do this on a different stream. Let's dig into it and uh, figure it out together then. That way um, we can really take the time to do it. Um, 
and I'm really annoyed that my camera keeps turning off. So uh, let's end this here so I can fix the camera, figure that out, and um, this discover URL together. Um, that way you can see my tired face at night too. That's what you're here for, I know. So that is, um, let me close this. Oh, you can't even see my screen anymore. But that's uh, refactoring some Emacs tonight. Um, we added the time in the mode line, which was helpful to me. Um, added that as the ability to toggle that on and off and remove the load average um, because I don't care about the load average down there. And then we also refactored um, some uh, or one function to get the organ repo name out of Git uh, so that we can use that in my uh, Git GitHub package or uh, GitHub helper functions. Anyway, thanks for joining me tonight. Um, I'm glad you came and hopefully you learned something. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think that there was something that I could have done better or um, something else you can let me know how to do better. Um, I'm still learning Emacs and I'm certainly no expert and um, like I knew none of this stuff two months ago. So um, I'm doing these partially to, I, I find I learn things better when I teach them. So I'm trying to do these to help solidify the ideas in my mind and also help hopefully help someone else along the way so leave a comment let me know what you think um if there's something i do better or if there's something you want me to cover please let me know anyway thanks have a good night